Okay, hello everyone and welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumpert from MS Dynamics World and we are here for a session all about manufacturing and Dynamics AX. I am joined by two real industry veterans today. Neiman Bakhtiari is President and CEO of Arbella Technologies and Gilbert Garcia is a manufacturing and CPG professional and uh, works as a consultant in the space. It's really great to have both of them here today. Uh, as we get started, please know that uh, Nima and Gilbert want to make this a really interactive session and uh, really tailor the event to your interest today, you and the audience. Um, they will be asking uh, questions at various times and uh, looking for some feedback. Uh, the best way you can respond today is to look to the chat uh, panel to the right of the main presentation window uh, where you can add feedback to any questions they ask. Uh, you can also use the Q&A block if you have questions that you want answered um, sort of separate from that. Uh, we're also going to get things started with a poll question, uh, or actually just a poll with a couple questions in it just to, um, just to get, again, a better understanding of what you and the audience uh, are interested in, uh, what, your own, uh, what your own business is like, and we'll be using that to um, to get started. So uh, I've opened that up. We'll leave it up for a few moments here. And uh, without any further delay, uh, why don't we get things started? I am happy to welcome uh, Nima Bakhtiari to start us off. Nima, welcome. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Jason, uh, for the introduction. And uh, I want to thank everyone uh, joining us uh, in this uh, 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 I, I say great summer day, you know, I love summer, so I hope everybody is having fun and, uh, and, uh, and uh, thanks again for joining us. As uh, uh, Jason mentioned, we will go through a quick survey, and, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, I'm going to go to the, uh, the objectives of the, uh, uh, of the webinar. So Jason, just let me know when uh, you'd like to do the survey and we can uh, uh, then start with the objectives of the seminar. And, um, so the poll is open. We're gonna, uh, the poll will be closing in about 10 more seconds here and I can, um, I can give you the result. It looks like I can tell you uh, B2B uh, is the, the most common type of enterprise that we have. Uh, some, are, some are both B2B and B2C. Um, assemble the order uh, is, uh, probably the most uh, popular, but make to order is also a uh, manufacturing mode that people have selected. And uh, there are some operational uh, operational people and IT uh, IT managers in the audience as well. So those are probably the, the primary uh, the primary types of roles that people have in the audience. That's great. Uh, well, thank you for uh, participating in that uh, poll. Uh, as you could see in the objectives of uh, today's uh, 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 webinar is that really what we'd like to do is establish and discuss the industry trends and challenges around uh, assemble to order, configure to order, or make to order manufacturing. And we'll define it uh, so we, are, we, we will all be on the same page. Uh, as uh, uh, you ask every industry veteran and expert, the definitions do vary a little bit, so we will discuss that. But the goal is to really really come up with a, a common trend and, and really discuss, and, and that's one of the reasons we'd like you this uh, uh, webinar to be interactive, is just to, to really find out what you are going through. So we could share your experience with uh, the rest of the uh, 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 folks that have uh, are attending this uh, webinar. And then, uh, and then also at the same time develop a, a set of strategies uh, that uh, addresses these challenges and really opportunities as well because what we've seen in the last uh, uh, really three years, uh, there are great opportunities uh, in this uh, uh, industry. And then, uh, and then uh, we could develop a list of uh, topics uh, that we will uh, specifically address. Uh, in the uh, next webinar, you know, and uh, as, uh, as some of you know, this is a, a two-part webinar series. So the very first part is about what, if you will, and then the, the second webinar is, is, is around how and, 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 and details. So uh, we're hoping that this uh, format is useful where you get to not only uh, uh, share your information but also get a lot of information back around the strategies, the challenges, and certainly the hard part, which is the uh, another exciting part of this whole thing. 
So the next part will be uh, in, in August uh, 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 12th, on August 12th, and, and we will be sending you, send you, send you more information uh, on that. So as I mentioned, you please use the Q&A section and, and really uh, give, uh, you know, uh, really give your feedback as we go. Um, so the agenda for today, as I mentioned, uh, we will discuss, uh, we'll have a quick introduction and talk about our Bella technologies, you know, and what, what it is that we do, and then talk, uh, dive into the configure to order manufacturing. We will definitely define it, uh, and uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, uh, and then discuss the trends, as I mentioned, uh, and certainly to talk about the supply chain design aspect of it, you know, and uh, people uh, that get into this business, uh, they are, you know, I call them, you know, supply chain design experts, and and of course everybody does things a little bit differently, and 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 well, how they do things differently not only depends on their clients and customers, but also depends on the legacy systems that they have. You know, the legacy systems uh, they, they they tend to define a, a set of constraints that really puts people in a in a, in a, sometimes in a corner or a, and certainly. Uh, uh, at times uh, uh, in a competitive advantage. Uh, and then, uh, and uh, obviously, we want to address how an ERP and supply chain solution can uh, uh, and really uh, help with this uh, activity. Uh, so with that said, uh, we'd like to just dive in and, you know, you know as uh, Jason mentioned, uh, uh, I am really, uh, you know, We've had a great time. You know, we've had, we've worked with Gilbert uh, since he was at Microsoft uh, and uh, uh, for a while, and you know, it's been a pleasure working with him on this webinar. Uh, he brings a lot of experience uh, in uh, in the area of manufacturing and consumer packaged goods uh, uh, industry. Has significant knowledge not only in ERP, CRM, but all kinds of supply chain. Uh, you know, applications like advanced planning and scheduling, demand planning, and what have you. So, uh, Gil, welcome. Again, it's been a joy uh, uh, to uh, uh, be working with you on this. Thanks, Nima. Uh, pleasure to be here today. Yeah, perfect. And uh, that's just a little bit about myself. You know, I've been in the industry for a while and, uh, and uh, uh, have a, an engineering degree and I've been working in the supply chain in the RP industry for a while. Uh, you know, that I was fortunate enough to work in the PLM, product life cycle management, as well as ERP and CRM. So, you know, bring a, a lot of experience, you know, how do the, how these systems work together, and certainly uh, have a lot of experience in the advanced planning and uh, scheduling arena. <coughs> we founded our Bella in 2002, and, uh, and we are a, uh, you know, I call, I call it, a, you know, in ERP, a supply chain veterans, just like myself from uh, uh, our founders, they're the, the original uh, developers and, 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 uh, and consultants for Dynamics AX and Exapto since uh, 1994. And uh, we're headquarters in Southern California, but we've got offices around the world. We have people around the world as well uh, that really covers uh, Asia, uh, uh, um, uh, Europe, as well as, uh, uh, of course, uh, North America. And uh, we're manufacturers and distribution at heart, but since AX does a lot of, uh, you know, has a flexible a flexibility that's very unique, we also, um, you know, uh, are pretty good in the global financial uh, uh, industry, uh, you know, and have um, uh, very large clients uh, that we've helped them with their global implementations. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, you know <laughs> one of the, uh, you know, set of products that we work with are Dynamics AX and CRM. We have, uh, you know, a set of add-ons that uh, really helps with the global and more complex implementations, uh, including security, uh, you know, master data centralization, consolidation, and certainly extensive manufacturing add-ons uh, that we develop. Uh, we, you know, <laughs> and one of the uh, key areas that we focus a lot is around customer retention and satisfaction, and, and uh, that is uh, uh, one of our focus, and uh, as a result, certainly we get uh, pretty good uh, feedback, and, and, and certainly uh, there's always room for growth and improvements in which we uh, focus on a daily basis. Uh, our client base is pretty vast, uh, and uh, uh, about 70, 75% of them are manufacturing, 
uh, and uh, 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 global, if you will, but simply because of our, our strength. Uh, and uh, in, particularly around today, we want to talk about <coughs> configure to order manufacturing. You know, I, I clicked too quickly. Uh, in particularly around, uh, you know, our experience around building materials, industry and life sciences, uh, uh, industrial and life sciences and complex materials manufacturing. That's something that we are, uh, uh, have a very significant focus. Uh, uh, this industry configured to order, uh, you know, the whole idea of on-time delivery, you know, and in, in many, uh, many uh, cases uh, with our clients, they have an integrated supply chain because they just can't trust their supply chain net network uh, to deliver on time. Uh, and so we've done quite a bit of work uh, in, in, in the whole area of, uh, from the engineering, uh, product design, marketing, demand planning, uh, configure, configuration, order management, all the way uh, to supply chain and manufacturing and, of course, delivering the goods on time. So that's uh, the list of uh, uh, clients that we have, uh, they range from public companies uh, to uh, uh, privately owned, uh, you know, uh, uh, four or five sites type uh, companies, but they all uh, are driven by uh, customer uh, 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 delivery uh, and, and a predictable model. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the, uh, some of our customers you know, decorative specialists, uh, you know, their uh, kitchen manufacturing, high volume, uh, four sites, uh, Vista, uh, uh, Pro is a landscape uh, uh, and design. Again, these are all they deliver on a fixed lead times, two days, uh, two weeks type model, uh, you know, best service, uh, uh, you know, exemplars, their uh, office furniture manufacturing, Thermon. Uh, uh, you know, a, an old uh, Dynamics AX customer from since uh, version 3, and, and now we're upgrading them to 2012. They're very similar, configured to order, uh, you know, all the way to uh, Marian Technologies, very precision manufacturing, you know, global presence uh, uh, and, and, and fairly complex manufacturing uh, uh, as well. Uh, the whole idea of integration to configurator or uh, external configurators or uh, the whole, uh, you know, use of uh, AX configuration. Was it the uh, product builder or the new uh, configuration is, is critical. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, the whole rapid pass order entry, you know, visibility across the supply chain. Can I deliver? Uh, are they, uh, are they, uh, is it, uh, is this, deli will this delivery be in, um, in danger, will, will I have shortages, and do I have capacity? Uh, and, and then, of course, the multi-site, should I build it here or there? Uh, and and, and you know, how do I really keep my old the product numbering, you know, and how do I digitize it for, you know, the, uh, you know, business intelligence so I can see what I'm selling, you know, what I'm not selling, uh, and, and uh, et cetera. So we've got, uh, you know, a lot of experience with that, and we look forward to sharing some of this experience with you, at the same time, you know, gain some of, uh, some knowledge from you around uh, uh, some of the challenges you're going through. <laughs> Jason might have mentioned it. You know, we will have a, a few minutes Q and A, but certainly, you know, uh, uh, some of the as your Q uh, questions come in, uh, we can definitely bring them in. Uh, uh, in particular, around the, uh, some of the uh, uh, particular questions we ask you. So with that said, uh, I am uh, going to, uh, uh, you know, pass this to Gil, uh, 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 and Gil, uh, why don't you take it away from here? Thank you very much, Nima. Hopefully everybody can hear me well. Um, so I wanted to talk about roles uh, because in any organization, any enterprise, um, the information or the visibility that you want out of your system is really going to be based on the role that you play. And so a lot of our discussion today will talk about um, what it is you want to get out of the system. How does the system convert data into information that you can, can use and react quickly um, upon? And so especially in short lead time environments, um, flexibility and reaction time is absolutely key. And so that's why we talk about roles. Um, a C-level executive is going to be looking for different data 
than a, a mid -ma uh, mid level manager, an IT person, or even a user in the organization. Uh, but really, the the purpose of the role is to eliminate the extraneous information and focus on what's important for that particular role. Uh, so an executive might be interested in summary summary sales data. Uh, an operations guy uh, might be interested in what are my late orders today, and of those late orders, which ones are late orders for key customers. Uh, and um, a user might be interested in, you know, uh, available to promise, capable to promise, uh, so that the customer service rep can can accurately promise uh, manufacturing dates. But all that revolves around an integrated. Uh, a uh, system like Dynamics. Uh, if the data is not accurate, your bills, materials, your routings, your inventory accuracy, if that's not all there, then the the, the data cubes that are going to be pulling data from your backbone are, are going to be inaccurate. So we're, we focus a lot on roles, and, and you'll see what we're talking about uh, in, in a minute or so as I begin to talk about, um, you know, a, a CTO environment. And, and how the rules see the data and information. So as I mentioned earlier, and hopefully these slides build quickly, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the C-level executive is, is typically going to be looking for not data, but information uh, that, that's generated by the data cubes. Um, data cubes are really uh, summar summarized information, uh, summarized information that, um, uh, it, it comes from, uh, I think there's 36 to 40 data cubes in Dynamics AX uh, that uh, you know, groups all the sales data, all the performance data, all the analytics data, and puts it out into a format that the user defines on how they want to see and where they want to see it. So we talk about mobility. Uh, an executive might be interested in seeing sales data uh, on a mobile device or, or a tablet, whether it's a Microsoft tablet or one of the competitors' tablet. But you can see, you know, they are interested in um, a summary data. How's the business doing? Uh, and I need it quickly. I don't want to uh, – traditional systems wait till the end of the month to, uh, to group that data and then read a, a report that might take me an hour to, to assimilate the data. I want to see the data in the format that I want. And so modern systems present – uh, data is the way I see it in three levels, C-level, mid-management, and user. And so this is an example of uh, one of the uh, views that you might get out of the Dynamics AX application. Uh, here's another one. Uh, again, uh, might be used by the VP of sales, might be used uh, by the CEO, COO, uh, and it really talks to the health uh, of the business, customer sales trends, what products are they buying? Where are they buying them? In what territories? And, and what's the percentage growth? Who are my customers that are trending who are buying more from me? And more importantly, why? And then as you see the sales trends, then you can drill down deeper um, into the, those answers. In a CTO environment, and we'll talk about uh, really what that means, uh, you can have very, very complex uh, configured order, what, what's known as engineered order. Uh, and then as you move down from engineer to order, you'll have uh, something uh, called design to order, uh, assemble to order, uh, make to stock. Those are very different uh, types of configuration problems. Uh, and, and then the other, um, the other issue that comes into play is who is your end user? Is it a business to business environment or is it a business to consumer? A lot of business to business environments uh, need their configurator to tie into a, a very strong project management system. So if I'm building oil rigs, uh, that project might take 12 months. And so when I configure that oil rig, I have a variety of configurations that I'm putting together. Uh, and so we'll talk about that in later slides. But you, you can see here, this is, a, this is kind of a, a summary slide that uh, a high-level director might want to uh, be looking at. Now, in, in a CTO environment, configured order environment, it's very important to see which configurations are selling the most and where. Uh, so if I'm uh, producing laptops, uh, it, you know, is the 2 megabyte, 4 megabyte, or 8 megabyte uh, laptop uh, selling? Uh, what colors are selling? What, what are the hot colors? And, you know, obviously, if you're in a, a business to consumer environment and you're selling products to the, the box stores or Best Buy, you know, they're going to want to know, um, you know, which of these configurations should I be putting on my shelves? 
typically in the past they've done their own analysis, but more and more uh, the channel masters, guys like uh, Costco and Sam's Club uh, and Best Buy, they're pushing the analytics back to the manufacturer. So instead of them telling you, this is what I want, they're going to be asking, you tell me what configurations are selling most and what, you know, you manage my shelf space and tell, and, and, and tell me what combinations of configurations I should, I should be stocking today. What are the trends? So this, you know, this uh, is... Uh, prevalent in electronics, but it's also in, in, in the furniture stores. It's also in, uh, and it's moving downstream. So eventually you'll be able to buy a, uh, what I call a white good in any color that you want. Uh, but this is, you know, a traditional screen that uh, somebody in the sales uh, or sales management uh, might want to see. Which customers are buying, where are they buying, and what configurations are selling the most. Uh, and then obviously the the reason to get this uh, data is you look at the configurations that aren't selling, the ones that have the lower sales volumes, and those are the ones you perhaps may not want to stock um, because the more you stock, obviously it impacts your agility, your carrying cost, and your supply chain complexity. Uh, and so you might want to downsize some of the vendors that, that you're buying from uh, and, and and spend more time with the uh, the vendors that uh, you know are buying the components that you're selling, or selling the components that you're selling, uh, and so these analytics help you really streamline your supply chain. If you look at weekly, monthly, and I would add, probably add daily customer sales trends, uh, you can see in in the old days of supply chain, you know, monthly reports were enough. That's not enough anymore, especially when you're dealing with the channel masters. Um, you need to have daily information on what's selling, what's not selling, uh, and what are the trends. Uh, you as the manufacturer, uh, you, you're going to have lead time in terms of uh, building new configurations or having new configurations available to you. The channel masters don't care about your lead time. They, they'll tell you, I want this product on my shelf within two or three days. And that means that you as a manufacturer have to understand the trends and anticipate the trends. And so either build relationships with uh, vendors uh, or, you know, get those new products in development and get ready to launch. You know, it's, it's common knowledge that, you know, the first manufacturer to launch product really gains about 50% of the market. And all of the others battle for the balance of that other 50%. So understanding what the consumer wants before they want it, much like the iPod, uh, you know, the, the Apple uh, marketing gurus, uh, figured out what the consumers wanted before the consumers asked for it. That's really the trend I see in manufacturing. You're going to have to become more savvy in terms of social media and understanding future trends uh, than you were in the past when it was a pure demand-driven uh, supply chain. Customer wants this. All right, let me take 12 months to develop it, and I'll give it to you in a year. Those days, those days are over. Um, you can see... In addition to the kind of the customer facing roles, the systems that support that that agility and perfect order that the sales guys need to deliver on are supported by manufacturing systems. So this is an example of a typical manufacturing role center. This is something uh, direct, you know, a director of operations might view, and these are all configurable. So. Um, it allows the, the, the manufacturing people really to, to drop onto their screens uh, things like a work list. Upper left hand, uh, uh, upper left hand corner, you see these are, these are the things I need to act on today. And so when buying a good digitized uh, ERP application, you're looking, what you're looking for is a push application. And I, what I mean by that, is you're looking for a system that uh, pushes relevant information and strips out irrelevant information so that the user, at whatever level, can make an informed decision. So in this example, roll centers up on the uh, upper left-hand side, you'll see these are the things that I have to do and act on today. But it gives me some good uh, analytics tools. Here's my uh, products and inventory statuses. So if I have stuff in quarantine, you know, big uh, uh, blue 
pie, uh, pie piece of the of the products that are in quarantine. I know I have to talk to the QC folks to understand why it's taking so long to, to move these things uh, out of quarantine. And that might mean revising my quality processes or perhaps pushing the quality uh, status onto my vendors and uh, having them do the testing and just send me certificates of analysis. But you know, you've got really good information like the fill rates, the rolling inventory turns. Um, and you know, if you're a green organization, you can see down on the lower right, uh, it really gives you a beautiful picture of how much waste your organization uh, is generating. So this is, you know, a generic manufacturing role center, but for a CTO customer, uh, you know, again, you'll probably want to uh, uh, populate this role center with a lot of CTO type um, uh, data in terms of configuration. So then as you move, you know, from middle management and user and executive level down to uh, the user community, you know, these guys are interested in the day-to-day -day blocking and tackling of an organization. So, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, the, 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 the real test of a good quality system is how it takes the data from the data cubes and pushes the relevant information. So you could have two choices. In the old days, you would generate a 15-page report that showed you vendor performance, and then the user would have to have to kind of go through there and analyze that data. If you look at this chart across the top, I can see right away that Contosa Consulting has uh, been consistently late, uh, uh, more than 15 days late. I can see that in a graphical format without having to go through the data. And you know the second uh, you can see that second brown bar chart on, on the on the bottom uh, that tells me that's the second uh, second violator in uh, in this analysis and you can scroll down and see the the performance levels uh, but and then you know beyond the graphical information you're going to want to see um, uh, analytics to see exactly you know how badly these guys are doing it and why uh, and so again this is an example of a user level push type. Um, uh, inquiry that uh, you know any manufacturing company might use. Obviously, the uh, purchasing, the procurement pe people need to see the traditional reports. I think Dynamics AX last time I looked had about eight standard, 800 standard reports that come with the system. But you know, most people today are using uh, the inquiries to to uh, push the data out to the users. So this kind of vendor aging report shows you kind of a snapshot vendor by vendor, you know, how they're performing. Uh, and then, again, you as a customer define what performance means. Is performance on time order? Is performance billing accuracy? Or is performance quality related data? I think Dynamics is one of the few uh, ERP systems I've seen in the last few years that allows you to analyze your vendors uh, based on the traditional uh, indicators, but, uh, but now on quality. So if they send you products out of your specs five out of ten times, that's as serious as uh, five out of ten late orders. Uh, so obviously, you know, here's an example of a nice uh, C-level report in, in a multi-country uh, enterprise. Uh, you know, you are able to take data across uh, multiple countries, multiple companies in an enterprise and, and assimilate it in one view. So, you know, you can look at um, how your companies are doing in Europe and Asia, Latin America, uh, and roll that into. And obviously, uh, behind the scenes, there's all the important things like currency conversions and, and, and timing and so on and so forth. Uh, but again, uh, you're not limited to a U.S.-based application. It is a global tool. Um, and it comes, this becomes even more important for a CTO-type customer if you are sourcing from overseas any of the parts. Now, we'll talk about what's happening in the U.S. Uh, in terms of manufacturing, re repatriating back to the U.S., and why global sourcing is, is changing, if you will, and why the U.S. is, is in, uh, finding a resurgence in manufacturing. But I'll talk, talk to that in, in a later slide. Now here I wanted to throw in uh, kind of a snapshot of the product builder in Dynamics AX. Now the configuration community is very diverse. Um, in extreme cases when you're dealing with uh, engineer to order or design to order, I'll explain the difference between the two. Engineer to order is essentially you are 
interacting uh, engineer or engineer to design um, specific, uh, typically larger projects for companies. So ETO, you might be designing a, a, a new refinery or an oil rig, a space shuttle, uh, it, or, or could even be uh, something like um, something that contains uh, services uh, and products. So you could be actually engineering uh, the build out of a new uh, uh, football stadium. And so you have services uh, and materials and, and sub, uh, subcontracts. Design to order is a combination of make to order and engineer to order. So some of the parts are off the shelf that you're putting together, uh, but some of the parts have to be engineered for that customer specific requirement. And that configurator requires that the engineer component to be sent over into your internal engineering uh, department for approval. And then you had that interaction between the configurator, your internal engineering design, and then the customer. Uh, uh, is this feasible? Is it not feasible? And if so, how much is it going to cost? Then as you move down the ladder of engineering complexity or CTO complexity, you're moving into, you know, CTO, configure to order, uh, or assemble to orders. And in the old days, it, uh, I'm probably revealing my age, but in the old days, it was called options order entry. Uh, and so as you move into CTO, you can see here is an example of kind of what a user would have in front of them uh, when they're uh, actually configuring a product. Uh, one of the things is that I haven't talked about is the importance of having the system, system generate a bill of materials and a routing for that particular part that you're building. So one of the things you as a, as, as a customer have to do is understand where the configurator sits. In some cases, the configurator sits in the ERP system. And so obviously the integration with the back office is, is very simple. In some cases, it sits in the CRM application, whether it's a Microsoft CRM system or a competitor CRM system. The important thing when you're looking at configurators to make sure that there's uh, th that configurator is talking to the back office. And then I guess the second question you need to ask is, or make decisions on whether you're going to use intelligent part numbers. Uh, and, you know, in a CTO environment, um, some customers still retain the, C, the uh, intelligent part number. So uh, you know, the, the guys on the shop floor can look at a, a part number and really decipher the configuration just based on the part numbers. Others move to a generic part number with dimensions, which is reduces your inventory uh, item counts um, and really takes it to the next level. But in this example here, you can see the customer service rep in the manufacturing company actually has some graphical information. So you, uh, upper left, you can see the different SKUs that they might be selling to the uh, the customer, whether it's a box store uh, or or you know or in some cases uh, a, a consumer. Um, and then over on the right hand side, as you begin to I guess decipher uh, the bill of materials. You can actually see uh, the fabrics uh, that go onto the chair. So as the, the customer service rep is working with the customers, they can say, yeah, we have this product available in tan and gray and brown, um, and, and here's what it would look like. And so in some cases, the configurator, the, uh, the customer uh, is able to see the configuration as you're, as you're building it. Um, and again, it's, and others, it's done behind the scenes, and then the customer service rep would configure it and send images uh, to the customer to make sure uh, in the uh, sales order acknowledgement. But you can see, uh, fairly easy to use. Uh, it's kind of a drop-down uh, menus. You know, what style of chair do you want? What style of uh, what, what fabric? What color? Uh, what color is the wood going to be? And you select the options you're building that's uh, customer specific. SKU, uh, and then you send them the configuration, and they validate it and take the order in that way. And then that gets shipped back to the back office ERP system to make and deliver. Hopefully, within within the two or three days that you committed in terms of fixed uh, order lead time for that particular set uh, product or set of products. So we talked earlier about you know what's happening uh, in the U.S. manufacturing sector. I think over the last five years, uh, my time with, when I was with Microsoft, um, I saw manufacturing uh, coming back to the U.S. and what's what we call the onshore opportunity. Uh, 
And what was happening is essentially to make the stock market, the stuff that's easy to make, it's you know high volume, repetitive, uh, no thinking, just make a thousand toasters, make a thousand toaster ovens or a million or whatever. That work went to Mexico, work went to China, went to the Asia Pac, uh, Asia Pac Rim. Um, and the reason for that was because um, the lead times were not important. You essentially made the same product and you restock the shelf. And so if a toaster sits on a, uh, on a supply ship for uh, two months, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, you generally have buffer stocks for these make to stock products. The onshore opportunity uh, is driven what I, from what I call mass customization. Um, the consumer market driven uh, by stores like Amazon and in some cases Apple and Microsoft really are taking the consumer driven uh, experience, if you will, uh, I want it my way and pushing that uh, up into the manufacturing space. And so what U.S. manufacturers are finding that um, if I am able to personalize product, I can outcompete the overseas supply chain because I can now uh, deliver these personalized products in two or three days versus two or three weeks or two or three months. And so the, the, the savvy U.S. marketers are, are understanding, A, I've got to be able to connect with the channel master, B, I've got to be easy to do business with, C, I have to have perfect orders and perfect order percentages. And, and that means, you know, right product, right time, right configuration, right price, right billing, uh, and right returns. Uh, and so the returns process is almost as important as the delivery process, okay? And so a lot of companies have moved to this thing called fixed lead times for a large number of their products so that that channel master can reliably say, hey, if I order this product from manufacturing uh, uh, company A, uh, I know I can count on it up being in, on my shelves in two or three days. Um, but really, it sounds simple, but it's not simple, especially in the CTO environment, because just think of the uh, simple component in the ERP system, uh, ERP system called revision levels. So rev levels um, can really drive a CTO environment crazy. And, and you know, think about <clears throat> the components that you have in stock. You could have a part or a component that's, uh, that has one or two different revision levels sitting in inventory and a third one that you have on open orders and then a dozen or so that are more, that are out in the field at customer, uh, in cu customer shelves or at customer sites. So a lot of, you know, in, in, in many cases, if you have, uh, to service a product that you make, you have to understand what revision was shipped to that customer, uh, and so you have to have the spares to support those rev levels. Uh, and so just something as simple as a revision level on a component says your ERP uh, inventory has to be 95 to 98% uh, accurate. And in addition to that, you have to have a, uh, a connected enterprise. And so when you have to order a rev level that's not your current rev level, you know, who needs to know about it? Well, manufacturing knows, needs to know about it. The guys that rework the product need to know about it. Procurement needs to know about it. Quality control needs to know about it. Costing needs to know about it. And so having a back office, what uh, uh, NEMA calls the digital enterprise, uh, is super key because to, to manage uh, a traditional make-to-stock environment is hard enough. When you're in, in a CTO environment, You've got all these different options that you've got to manage uh, uh, for, from now and in, in some cases for many years uh, supporting rev levels that, that are out there. Uh, and so obviously, you know, this stuff needs to be profitable. And, you know, a return order that's not serviced pro uh, possibly uh, properly could, could cost you a channel master sale or a channel master as a customer. And, and the impact is not that one order, it's the future orders that you lose from that customer. So uh, when you're dealing now in this, in this world of channel masters, you're gonna have to have a back office system that's able uh, to support the sophisticated and rapid reman demands of these channel masters, okay? Now what's the definition of a supply chain? The definition of a supply chain is the, the integrated flow of information Order comes in, 
cash, customer pays for the order, product, product goes out to the customer, product comes back from the customer, and then cash and information. So, you know, if you're not prepared to handle a very sophisticated supply chain with your current uh, ERP system, you need to step up to the plate and then get that thing modernized. So in the, CT, uh, in the CTO environment, I mentioned earlier at the very top of complexity, uh, you have engineer to order, and then in there I would also throw this up this other element called design to order. Um, now, when you're talking to vendors, make to order in, in the world of ERP, CRM, supply chain can mean many things. Um, some customers I've, I've spoken to will say make to order is really – uh, we don't make anything unless the customer orders. Uh, some customers will say make to order means we make the product the way the customer wants it. it means we configure to order. So make sure you clarify that when you're when you're talking to your your vendors. And then make to order and assemble to order are, are really the subjects of what we're talking about today. Those are in the middle ranges of complexity when it comes to the CTO space. And obviously, uh, when you're in a CTO environment, you have to have an integrated supply chain. I mentioned the example earlier of why that's important. Inventory manufacturing, sales, ships, returns, quality, all those guys have to talk to each other and have one source of the truth. Now, I also threw in this little box at the bottom because your world becomes even much more complex if you have to service the product. If a customer uh, can return product uh, to you and you have to service it, that adds a whole nother level of complexity that uh, we're not going to be able to talk about to due to time constraints today. So again, understand, what we're talking about today is what I call that middle section of complexity. Configuring an order represents the ability to, uh, for customer sales to make up a configuration of a product, okay? And that can be simple or it can be complex. And you'll notice I put a little bullet on the bottom that says there are multiple levels of CTO, from ETO, design to order, assemble to order, make to stock. Um, CTO tends to be a, a, a blend of make to stock and configured order. So some of the components you make and put on the shelf, um, uh, and some components you're going to procure from third-party vendors, and some components you're going to make in-house based on the customer requirements. So your, your back office system really has to be able to support all three of those different, uh, very different models. And then finally, um, you know, how does a, an enterprise, a world-class enterprise, support a CTO environment? Well, if you look at uh, the kind of tools that may be within ERP, but sometimes are outside of ERP, you have to sometimes look beyond ERP for some support tools. So business intelligence, BI. Now, typically with the dynamics applications, BI is built in. Um, but that'll answer the questions, you know, we talked about earlier. Who are my profitable customers? Who are, uh, you know, what products are selling? Strategic planning. Strategic planning can include sales and operations planning. It can also include advanced planning. Uh, typically, those would be applications found outside of the uh, ERP application dynamics. Um, strategic planning execution. Uh, nothing works unless you can get these things done efficient, efficiently and predictably. So you don't want to surprise your operational people, but that implies that you have to have the uh, digital enterprise. Uh, AP tools, advanced planning, advanced scheduling tools. Um, ERP systems present information uh, to the user, and then the user makes the critical decisions. AP and AES tools, advanced planning, advanced scheduling tools, optimize based on the criteria you set for optimization. So whether it's lowest cost, fastest delivery time, uh, you know, no stockouts, uh, manufacturing efficiency, those tools take the information from the ERP system and give you the highest return on your investment. So typically those, those tools have paybacks of uh, two to three months compared to ERP, which is, you know, 12 to 18 months. And then operational analytics and closed loop uh, ERP, those are typically found in uh, uh, the Dynamics uh, uh, ERP and CRM application. And the one thing I always need to mention at the very bottom, uh, these, these IT systems work great, but you've got to have the people skills and talent to use them. Uh, so don't forget about the people component of your supply chain. If you have bad people working with great tools, you're, you're going to fail. 
Uh, so invest as much time in the people as you do in the systems that you input. So this is where Nima and I will uh, tag team to talk about this slide. Uh, Nima's uh, big mantra and Arbella's big mantra is digitize the enterprise, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, so Nima, at this point, you know, feel free to uh, join in. But yeah. I, the, the thing I like most about this slide is easy to do business with, and that implies to me uh, high perfect order percentages. Nima. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one thing that, uh, you know, I'd like to add as part of the, uh, uh, you know, previous slide and this slide is really uh, these are uh, the type of uh, questions and strategies and objectives that people have. Uh, one question that we hear from uh, C-levels, how do I get it done? How do I, I understand that. You know, I think we talked about uh, business intelligence, right? Uh, business intelligence requires end-to-end uh, -end, uh, digitization of the enterprise. Uh, that means you've got to have uh, systems uh, to capture all the processes, you know, and removing the, the, the walls be, between the pro, uh, operations, you know, and sales and what have you. But in order to do that, how do you get it done? So that's one of the key uh, things that I want to bring up. And, and the, part of the how is obviously, you know, having the right vision and objectives, you know, and operational strategies. and. Uh, and really, uh, again, these aren't some of the things you haven't seen and, uh, you know, uh, you haven't heard, but these are a list of things that we have seen uh, in order to go to that digitized uh, uh, enterprise, which in order to get all the data that people uh, need to get, uh, all the data, all the measurements that uh, Gil talked about in the beginning of the uh, presentation. So I guess uh, our question to you today uh, is, uh, if you go to the next slide, is what type of uh, strategies and pain points are you facing? So please uh, take this, this opportunity uh, and, uh, uh, and really uh, in the Q&A box, add your uh, challenges and pain points. Uh, and, uh, and with that, with that said, uh, you know, use the Q&A. And the goal here is to capture your feedback, add to it, and then really uh, make this to be a, a, a collaborative effort in you know, really developing a, a, a set of uh, a common strategies that people are, are facing. And, and then uh, obviously with the pain points, uh, we will be focusing the next uh, webinar addressing them. Uh, so, um, uh, as some of you, uh, you know, the, you may uh, you may recall, I, I mentioned around how do I get it done? How do I get it done uh, in the digital enterprise? Is really also include um, uh, really marketing and sales, you know. And we're seeing some of our uh, manufacturing customers uh, and clients. They're just saying, okay, great, I've gotten my back-end system go working, but how do I get closer to customers? You know, how do I leverage the social media? Uh, how, do I, uh, how do I really get, uh, enable our sales team, uh, which typically their sales team are, uh, you know, the way either they sell to distributors, or they rely on very strong uh, network of uh, relationships. Uh, but how do you really capture that network of relationship and extend it to the end users, uh, from distributors to the consumers, to the other uh, other clients? So, so the, those are all uh, like uh, some of the challenges that we're seeing. Actually, I see a comment here uh, exactly re related to the sales and marketing. So please do continue uh, on your uh, uh, on your uh, uh, feedback here. Uh, and uh, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks, Gil. Uh, yep. So, so this is, I guess, uh, what we're doing in essence is configuring to order our next webinar. Um, so we're kind of asking the audience on today's webinar to just uh, use the, uh, the either the chat window or the question in, uh, window to say, hey, here's what we'd like to hear talk about at the uh, I think August 12th uh, event which would be, you know, the, our strategy might be to connect with channel masters or digitize our enterprise. So these are kind of the things we will talk about uh, based on your feedback at, at our next event. So, Nima, I gave control to you, so you want to advance? Yep, there you go. Yes, I did, uh, Gil. You, yep, uh, advance. Okay. So, uh, 
one of the things we want to I, I just uh, clarify, and when we talk about digitizing the enterprise, um, here's kind of a snapshot of what a, a typical manufacturing ecosystem looks like. The stuff on the inside of the box, the, the, in the, light, the, the light green, is what you would typically find in an ERP application. Now, it's not everything you would find, obviously, but, you know, it, it's the, the major components. It's manufacturing, finance, uh, distribution, uh, and uh, manufacturing. Uh, the things that surround that box, uh, like advanced planning, advanced scheduling, uh, demand planning, uh, are typical Microsoft ecosystem products uh, that, I guess, enhance the application. Now, uh, you can find a, a, a configurator inside the Dynamics AX application, but if you're in a complex uh, ETO type environment, you might get Arbella to bring in a partner that addresses uh, an ETO environment uh, better than you might find in the in the core application. So the the point is, in order to run a uh, uh, a strong supply chain, uh, you need to have a core foundation, what I call the core four. So manufacturing, distribution, finance, um, and uh, and accounting. Uh, so those components in the box are typically, when we talk about digitizing the, the, the enterprise, these are the components that you have to have, you should have in place, uh, you know, with a good system, uh, ready to move to the next level, which would be the surrounding layers. And then in order, and then in order to connect to the channel masters, have a responsive supply chain. And this is another, uh, I think, another point that Nima and I were going to tag team on. Uh, Nima put this great diagram together, but what, the impact that I see with this slide, over on the left-hand side, you've got your customers. Now, regardless of whether you are a business-to-business -business or business-to-consumer, when, when I talk about a business-to-consumer, I'm talking about companies, manufacturing companies that make consumer products, whether it's electronics or white goods or, or whatever. When I talk about business to business, I tend to categorize those companies as guys that make uh, large machines, uh, typically project managers. Those things could be fire engines, it could be tractors, it could be oil rigs. Um, what I did here was just add this little component, this little uh, red arrow and the keys to the kingdom. Um, in the future, uh, from today moving forward, uh, manufacturing companies are going to have to have a seamless interface to the channel masters. The channel masters are the retailers and the distributors because those guys are the guys that will place orders for a thousand, uh, you know, a hundred thousand components compared to the consumer. Now, the consumer is, is important as, as always. Uh, and depending on what kind of business you're in, you're, you may need a website that supports a configurator. You may need to put a configurator in a, bo in a box store. So if you're making kitchen cabinets, and, uh, you might put a configurator in Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, but the key is that integration between the modern uh, social media marketplace that reacts quickly uh, to consumer trends now and in the future, you have to be able to react as quickly with your manufacturing supply chain to support those channel masters. If you do not, the channel masters are going to find companies that can. And so one of the things that you have to work on is making sure that your system is agile, accurate, seamless, and easy to use and that you have that interface built to, uh, to that, those channel masters. From, from that little red arrow to the, to heading to the right, that's the digital enterprise. Uh, and so, you know, working on the perfect order uh, implies that you have inventory accuracy, that you're able to ship the right product, the right quality, the right price. Uh, invoice correctly, take manage returns, plan and schedule efficiently. Because you can't plan and schedule, you can't meet, the, meet those fixed lead times. Uh, and so, you know, that digital enterprise is from that little red area to, to the right. The guys driving demand from now until forever 
are those channel masters for that little red arrow to the left. Nima, your comments? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, we got a good uh, a good question here. Is that um, you know uh, what is it the uh, with the it's, it's regard to, with the uh, legacy application. How do we go through this journey? And that's that's a good question. And um, I think uh, this is actually uh, this, the beginning of that uh, discussion we're going to have, uh, which is part of part, a part of part two. Um, as uh, Gil mentioned, really breaking the barriers be between these organizations. And not only we're talking about the red arrow, which is to really to your clients and customers, but we're finding out because of the legacy situation, there are barriers be from the engineering to product design, to sales and customer service, to production plan, and certainly, uh, um, you know, the delivery aspect of it. You know, a lot of configured to order uh, 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 clients, they train their customers that they will ship within two days, five days, ten days, or uh, or two weeks, uh, and 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 really uh, because they never had the ability to go back and really check to see if they can really deliver or not what the you know uh, uh, material shortages or capacity issues are with the digital enterprise. Uh, really, that uh, visibility, I call it information lead time, is reduced to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, into seconds, you know, minutes, so you'll be able to communicate to, to your, uh, your customers faster. Um, and, of course, that's the step one as part of the journey. The second part is really getting closer. The, the uh, keys uh, to the kingdom uh, to understand uh, the, the market. Uh, what is selling, what is not, being, uh, you know, participating in the social media, uh, and certainly, you know, getting closer to your distributors. Uh, a lot of folks on the call are B2B, so how do you really serve your distributors better and better and, 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 and really, and that component of it comes in around customer service, you know, when there are products that are uh, in wrong orders, you know, and, and, and how do you really deal with it, uh, how do you really keep track of that information to improve uh, um, uh, yeah. So, so I guess uh, my uh, one question that we have is: Is your system prepared uh, uh, to meet the needs of your channel masters and all that? So, what I'd like to do, <coughs> okay. The, uh, so, we'll come back to that question. So, as part of our um, next session, we're going to be ta talking about an end-to-end -end key business process. Uh, where we will discuss the, the customers at the manufacturing and, and sales order uh, and um, uh, planning and marketing all the way to the shop floor with a combination of Dynamics AX, you know, tools such as product data management, CAD integration, Dynamics CRM for marketing and sales and customer support, as well as con configurator within Dynamics AX and also external ones, um, and all with the, we're working together so you get the data that you need. We're getting uh, uh, close to the end. There is one particular question that, uh, that I'd like to pick uh, an answer is that uh, how do you, how to set up the configurator with rules for products that automatically include or exclude selections based on what the user has selected? But yeah, that's a great question. You know, obviously configurators are designed to do that. You know, an AX, Dynamics AX configurator uh, does a fairly good job. Uh, 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 in that area, yeah, obviously, it doesn't have, you know, the web component. It doesn't have a, 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 a sophisticated rules management, uh, but certainly you could do that. So we will take this question uh, and certainly answer that question in detail uh, next time. There are a couple other a couple minutes left. Uh, what I'd like to do is look at the uh, um, uh, if there is a how do I stream, uh, streamline order and quotation process. Uh, yeah, very, uh, very uh, good question as well. It's really, um, it goes back to uh, configuration uh, piece, you know, being able to, uh, you know, uh, create a quote and be able not only understand uh, uh, the percentage, the, the, the possibility, probability of the quote, so maybe the rest of the organization can see, uh, could have visibility, but also be able to uh, uh, convert them into sales uh, and, and certainly uh, delivering them on time. So again, another uh, good question that we, uh, we will be taking into consideration. 
So we don't have much more time here, uh, Jason. I want to thank you, Jason, and the team for uh, um, uh, for for the opportunity. Uh, and uh, just a quick thing uh, for the for the slides and any other information and questions you might have, please contact us. Uh, um, and thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Nima. Thank you, Gilbert. Uh, well done. Thank you to the audience for your questions and your participation today as well. As, uh, as Nima said, we've recorded today's event, uh, and we will be featuring part two on August 12th. We hope to see you there. Uh, at this point, we will conclude today's event. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Gil. Jason. Okay. Cheers. Great. Thank you.